Hello. My name is Nate Jackson. And this is Criterion Collection Review number 98. La Ventura. Directed by Michelangelo Antonioni. Now, if you thought that intro was long and drawn out, wait until you sit through this. Look at it. Look at how miserable it looks. You will be too after you see this. 1960. 143 minutes. Black and white, Italian, and it's not that this is, no, no, don't you, now, first of all, before we obviously talk about the plot, what little there is of it, the obvious, uh, the main point to make is that this is not a bad movie, it's not a, it's not a movie that, you know, just, well, maybe it is a bad movie, I don't know. All I can say is, it's not the worst movie ever. It's not Sallow bad. It's not Picnic at Hanging Rock bad. It's not Night Porter bad. It's not Unbearable Lightness of Being bad. But it's tremendously... Just like this review. By seeing this review, you no longer have an obligation to watch this movie. But anyway, let's talk about the plot. Um, so it's about this girl, um, this girl named Anna. She's got a fiance named um, Sandro. His name's Sandro, I think. Um, Sandro, yes. And uh, they go on a trip with their best friend, um, with her best friend, uh, Claudia, as well as a couple of other friends, some those kind of rich, richy people, as they, Juliana and Corrado, um, and uh, Patricia and Raimondo. Oh, Raimondo, I don't, I don't remember who he is. You know, it's hard to keep track of the names, and they don't show the names on the and the subtitles. Um, when they say them, unless it's like in context with a sentence. So, uh, yeah, that doesn't help much. That doesn't help my situation much either, as far as remembering characters. Anyway, um, Anna and Sir San Sandro are taking, are, are, um, you know, trying to be, you know, they, they're like having sex, they have sex, but it's like Anna, uh, like Claudia comes to pick them up and, they have sex before, you know, before they leave, and she just stands out there waiting for them. How fucked up is that? But apart from that, um, so they go on the trip, and they go on this boat, and they're traveling, like, this is an island, and uh, Sandra seems to be really, like, disinterested in Anna sometimes, like, distant. Like, she just, he seems to only be interested in, like, the sexual part, you know. Um, at one point, she jumps off a boat, off the boat, and starts swimming in the ocean. And, um, <clears throat> she apparently fakes, fakes that there's a shark in the water, just to see if Sandro will come to her rescue, but he just doesn't do anything, and somebody else comes and saves her from nothing. Um... All the while, you know, so they get to the, they get to the island and so Anna and Sandra are kind of fighting and Claudia is really lonely and just like distant and she feels, I think she feels kind of left out by, um, by, uh, the love of you know, her best friend and her fiance. 
So there's that. And then, of course, the and I don't think she can connect very well with her friends who are also fighting and, and just really just not her style. Uh, so one morning or one afternoon or whatever the hell she leaves, Anna is nowhere to be found. She she disappears. She kind of, I guess, runs away. And uh, the friends look everywhere for her on the island. And uh, after a while, they find her belongings. And at one point, I think Claudia thinks that um, she killed herself um, when she finds her things in. It's, you know, kind of like, oh, okay, so she, she's okay. She must be alive somewhere. Um, at the same time, you know, like, so the, it becomes a huge thing. They call in the police. And um, at one point, um, Claudia and Sandro are looking. And, Cla and Sandro grabs Claudia's arm and looks at her with this, like, lustful gaze. And it's kind of revealed from this that Sandra wants Claudia. It's like, it's been, you know, it's been enough time, I guess, that, uh, that he's already starting to forget about Anna. He continues to search for her in the movie, but at the same time, he's lusting for Claudia, her best friend, his fiance's best friend. Yeah. And at first, you know, Claudia is just like, get away from me. Go do this. Go do this so you'll be away from me. Go search that part of an island. And then at one point, she she tries to search other islands. She takes a train. And Sandro you know, hijacks a train and gets up on it. And I keep using the word hijack. and It's just a good word. You, know? you didn't actually hijack. You just got on the train and followed her, more or less. And they meet, and she's like, you know, it's only been three days, you know, just get away from me, go do this, go do that. And she's like, and he's like, no, I want you, I want you, I must have you in my life, or something like that. And uh, meanwhile, he keeps searching for her, and Claudia, you know, meets up with her friends, her friend um, Patricia, I think, I think her name is, uh, I know, I think her name is um, Giuliani, Giuliani, G, Giuli, Giulia, Giulia. Who has like sex with some sex with this uh, young kid, not young kid, but like you know must have been like in his twenties, some twenty year old kid, like in front of Claudia, like in this art studio, and uh, so she's like, yeah, she's. I think her loneliness, you know, grows so much that eventually her and Sandro get back together. And they continue the search together and on a hillside overlooking like this railroad um, track, they end up making love on, on the hill. And she, you know, they confess that they do want each other and they start, you know, this, you know, kind of tryst thing and, um, or fling, if you will. Um, and so they're together now and, Meanwhile, they're all searching for Anna, and they they become, and of course, as their relationship kind of deepens and they become more and more intimate with each other, they become more and more paranoid by, the, they become more, more and more paranoid at the fact that, you know, they think they see Anna in the, in the town, in shops, and, yeah. Uh, eventually, at one point, they they finally go to this really fancy hotel where they think they've they think Anna's staying, and they look around. and Claudia goes up to her room, and um, um, Sandro stays down and tries to find her. and He sees this actress that he met earlier in the film, this Gloria Perkins woman. And uh, after a while, Claudia comes down into the lobby to find. Sandro having sex with Gloria. She runs out of the hotel, heartbroken. She's crying her eyes off. And um, Sandro comes to follow her and sits down at a bench next to her, next to where she sits. She's sitting. And he starts crying himself. And uh, 
she stands behind him and puts her hand on the back of his head and they look out on the sea and if and if you don't believe and I don't and you got to believe this that's the end of the film they don't resolve Anna's whereabouts they don't resolve like you know like the other friends you know it just ends with them crying and being together after you know after he just had sex with Gloria Perkins and you know to be a little more analytical about that um you could say that Aunt Gloria does look a little like Anna they're both brunettes and they've got similar eyes so it's possible that he had sex with her out of you know out of missing Anna and that's why Claudia I guess forgives him but the fact that they don't find Anna is another one of those stupid picnic at hanging rock moves where they just end the movie on an unresolved note just, just. good fucking gravy I sat through two, almost two and a half fucking hours for an ending that made no goddamn sense. I sat through almost two and a half hours of people looking at each other, people not looking at each other, people not saying anything, people saying very little, people saying things that don't make any fucking sense only to find out that the actress in the beginning of the film who disappeared never shows up again. God damn it. So, because of this wonderful romp through picturesque Italy, depressingness, black and white, joy of romance and sex and eroticism. D minus. Yeah, I said it, D minus. It's not sallow bad, but because it's just, it's just, it's torture. This movie is, is, is torture without the torture, without the torture scenes. See, Salo's bad because you're watching torture. This is just torture without, this is, this is artsy fartsy torture. D minus. It's, it's a movie, but it's not a movie. Yeah, sucks. Anyway. Supplements. Oh, the supplements suck just as bad. An hour long documentary about Antonio called Documents and Testimonials, which is just him talking about, you know, just these people talking about his films, and they're just talking about saying a bunch of shit that don't make any fucking sense either. It's a little bit about La Ventura. A little bit with Monica Vitti, or what was her name, Monica Vitti. And to be honest, she's a really attractive um, actress. I, I found that I could see, you know, she, Monica Vitti is a very attractive actress, so, you know, that's why, I, another reason why I couldn't really be horrendous She's nice to look at, in other words. I mean, Anna's nice to look at, too. Um, and I think, for some, I think, just to be a little more analytical, I think Claudia, they start off making Claudia really plain. And as Anna, we distance ourselves from Anna, they make her even more and more and more of attractive. That's just something I noticed. By the end of the film, she's just fucking gorgeous so that's what the movie's got for it monica vitti apart from that fucking sucks so yeah um so you get to see her in the documentary but yeah it still doesn't hold up very much um 20 minutes of uh, about 15 16 minutes of essays with read by um, by antonioni um read by jack nicholson of all people um, I should say, I shouldn't say of all people because he did star in one of 
Antonio's films um, with Maria Sh- Schneider, uh, The Passenger, like 1975. So, and then he has a like he tells a story about he tells a story about working with Antonio on The Passenger. And there's a trailer, and then three and a half minute restoration dem- demonstration, and then Love and True. Uh, yeah, D minus. Fuck it. Fuck that movie. Fuck yeah, you can fall on the floor. I don't give a shit. And on a more positive note, the worst is over. Because next, tomorrow, 99, Rolling Stones, Gimme Shelter. Oh, man. Now, if they do Ruby Tuesday, then I'll be just like, but then, but then the greatest, the greatest is, oh, the greatest is yet to come. Ooh, the Beastie Boys Video Anthology. I've been waiting for this for over, I bought this, I think, a year ago. I must have bought this a year ago when I started getting into the Criterion Collection. And it was on sale. You know, they were doing the sale last year. And so I said, you know what? This is going in the pot. So this, I think the very first one I bought was this one. So, yeah, I've been waiting, holding off. And so I'm just, I'm excited. So anyway. See, I'm already tired from watching that fucking movie. Watching those people just fuck. Oh man, I think, yeah, I think, I mean, I'm, I was, I was thinking about doing the worst, the worst of the worst in the first 100, like, for, like, just, you know, because I'm going to do the best of, but I want to do the worst, but that would be, I, I don't think that'd be nice, and it's hard to pick, like, the worst of the worst, but I think if I had to pick the worst three that I can think of, uh, the top five worst, it would be Salo, Picnic at Hanging Rock, um, what else? Uh, Night Porter, Unbearable Lightness of Being, and La Ventura. In that order. Maybe, or maybe not in that order, I'm not sure. I know, I know I'm missing a couple that really suck, you know, compared to those. Dead Ringers wasn't, I don't remember liking Dead Ringers that much, but, I mean, but at least Dead Ringers, you know, was, you know, felt a little more complete. But, uh, fuck it, I'm done. Can't say nothing about this. So thanks for watching. Don't make your movies like Aventura. Write a fucking ending. Don't pace out your speech like this. Give your characters plenty of fucking dialogue. And we will see you tomorrow. For Give Me Shelter. Give me shelter. It's gimme shelter. Don't be polite, Mick. Sorry. And until then. Goodbye.